And what's up, everybody? It is your boy, Cheap Ludes. Literally the number one source in the world for 2K news, he said non-sarcastically. Look, I wanted to talk about this yesterday, but I didn't really get a chance. Um, I wanted to make a video on it when I got home, but I didn't really feel like it. So I do want to talk about it now, though. And this has picked up a lot of steam over the past, I would say, 24 hours. And I'll go into it. As you can see, we got some pretty reputable news sources talking about it you know polygon pc gamer games radar uh euro gamer even going down in the news here we have like even bloomberg article down here talking about this now this is interesting so i'm not gonna go too deeply into my thoughts on the matter like realistically um anybody who watches this channel at all in any capacity knows my thoughts on uh 2k's practices to say the least so class action lawsuit targets nba 2k's microtransactions illinois parent alleges my team loot boxes exploit children now this was uh published yesterday and uh from my knowledge at least the first one that i saw yesterday was i believe Eurogamer was at least the first in my opinion or at least the first one that i saw that published this I'm not sure if they were the first people specifically to report on it, but they were the first people that at least I saw. Now, shout out to Bam 2 k for posting this because that's who I saw it from originally because I was at work. Take-Two Interactive, the parent company of 2K Sports and publisher of NBA 2K22, among all you know 2K titles since I think like back in 2K, one of the 2Ks in the late aughts. So I think they've been the parent company since I believe 2K6. 2k7 because the espn was with them before and then it was sega before that so i'm not sure exactly when 2k sports took it over or what i should say is i'm not sure when take two interactive was the ones who took it over either way it doesn't really matter it's a history lesson for another day maybe i'll make that one day who knows Let's see how this video does first so has been sued by an Illinois parent over the manner in which the game handles random draws in its popular my team card collection player management mode now, first off, I find it interesting that the uh, this lawsuit is actually coming from the hometown of NBA player Fred Van Vliet. Fun fact. Really interesting. The case moved from state court to federal court on Take Two's motion. So essentially what that means is Take Two wanted to push it to federal court. And the reason for that is probably because they believe they have a better chance in federal court than they do in, in state court, which is accurate. The Illinois state court might actually rule against them uh federal court chances are will not so it alleges unfair deceptive and unlawful practices including illegal gambling practices now if this was a title that was t for teen um i think even t for teen would be an issue but if this was an m-rated title i don't think we would be seeing any type of lawsuits coming out of this but because it is an e for everyone sports title that's why we're seeing lawsuits come out and if you guys aren't familiar this is not the first lawsuit involving microtransactions uh there's been a few in the past already blizzard has been hit with some over their overwatch kind of aggressive microtransactions granted those were mostly cosmetic um in addition to that we've seen it happen with fifa ea has been hit with a few of these um back the most famous of which would be battlefront 2 in ea from 2017 so it's interesting the plaintiff seeks class action status for the case and at least five million in damages take two interactive is only the defendant now here's the thing i'm not a lawyer i do not have a law degree right so i can't explain why five million is the amount uh that they're asking for now what i can say is i'm guessing the five million is a shock and awe tactic um, and the, what I'm saying by that, and I could be wrong, if any actual like people who know law are in the comments, please do comment because I don't know what I'm talking about specifically. This is just my interpretation of it. My interpretation of it is that they're saying 5 million for a shock and awe factor, right? You put out 5 million and then you just hope for a settlement from 2K so 2K can make this go away. Now, this is still likely to happen in that case. Um, it would be likely that 2K would just settle this and kick it under the rocks. And I'll talk about why they're going to do that later. The amount of money they make, $5 million is nothing to them. $5 million to 2 k is literally like $10 to me. Like, it means nothing to them. Right? Are they going to pay out $5 million? No. 
chances are they will not. They'll pay much less than that, but they'll probably just settle it out of court just to bury this story as much as possible. But with the somewhat decent amount of coverage this story is getting, um, it might be difficult for them to completely bury this story. And they might actually have to implement some actual change into the model for my team specifically, and by extension, also for Park. Uh, the reason for that, I'll talk about in a second. A Take-Two representative declined to comment to Polygon, saying the company did not comment on legal matters. Okay, um, first off, it's probably not wise to trust a company that will not even put out a statement about this. Um, 2K typically will do this when they are met with any sort of controversy in regards to their game. They will typically remain silent, uh, which all I can say about that is that is a pretty good indication that they're doing something wrong and that the lawsuit might not be completely fraudulent because they refuse to even talk about it, <laughs> like realistically. Um, I really need to invest in an ad blocker, but YouTube does not pay that well. I know it's only like five bucks a month, but you know, it is what it is. NBA 2K's My Team functions a lot like EA Sports Ultimate Team modes, which have likewise been hauled before courts and legislative hearings over loot box practices. Yes, they have. Um, players acquire packs whose contents are unknown for an in-game currency that is both freely acquired, okay, and bought with real money. Here's the thing, though. I've had a theory for a while, and it is just a theory, and I have absolutely no proof to back this up, and I will say this in this video. Uh, just because I would like to protect myself, <laughs> more or less. Uh, my theory for a long period of time was that VC, the purchasable currency in regards to 2K when it comes to my team, has better pack odds than MT. I've said this for a long time. Anybody who's watched my channel knows. I've been saying this for a long time, and I've always had better luck when it comes to VC, when it comes to purchasing, than I have with MT in currency, like in-game currency. I have. <clears throat> now, is that accurate? One could not say one way or the other. I've had good luck with both. I've just felt like my good luck has been more prevalent when I've spent money on the game. Inside the packs, players are inside the packs, are players and other items of varity, her varying rarity and usefulness. This is the key right here. Usefulness. Usefulness is the key, all right? Now, I have no issue with video games even aggressively monetizing their game when it comes to cosmetic items. I personally don't see a huge problem with this, and this is coming from someone who I would say, you know, has socialistic tendencies, right? I don't have an issue with that completely. I really don't. Like Fortnite, for instance, I don't mind that they charge $2 for a Spider-Man skin or whatever. Like capitalism is going to capitalism. I, I, it doesn't really bother me whatsoever. You know what I mean? The problem I've always had with, in addition to, you know, my team, it would be Ultimate Team, um, any of the card collection modes, realistically, is that they not only come like they combine the prevalent microtransactions of video gaming, but then they're able to combine that with pay to win mechanics, which I think is a huge issue. And if this stuff were to happen in other games and we've seen it, there would be a lot more outrage. But you see, sports games typically do not receive the same outrage, right? If this type of tactic, the tactic that my team and all the other card collection modes do of random pack drops that you can buy with money that will give you things that make you better in the game. If you were to apply that to a competitive level shooter, you would see that taken out almost instantaneously. I mean, we've seen it with Call of Duty just putting in skins like the all blacked out operator skin in Warzone. So we've seen them do stuff like that. And back in the day, I mean, we saw you know, Call of Duty do pre-order guns and stuff like that that would take forever to unlock under normal circumstances. So we've seen it to a certain extent, sure. Um, but it is extremely prevalent in these card collection modes, especially my team. My team is especially bad at this. It's arguably the worst out of all of them as of right now in regards to players that are purchased with money or players that are purchased with time, there's a big discrepancy between those two things, right? The best players in the game are all purchasable squads. If you want any any evidence to that whatsoever, look no further than the 250K tournament yesterday. Or two days ago. Yeah, two days ago. I forget what day it is. Look no further than that tournament. You could go through and you could look at every single squad that was ran in that tournament by every participating member of the tournament, and you would find very, 
very little in regards to earnable cards like reward cards being ran on those teams. Almost every single player on those squads, aside from a few random guys here and there, regardless how cheap that they are, quote unquote, um, they're marketable or auctionable players almost every single time. So something to think about. The Illinois suit alleges that NBA 2K22's payment scheme psychologically distances players from the reality of spending real money, which it absolutely does. Such transactions are also attractive to minor children who have less understanding about the difference between spending real currency and virtual currency. Kids are also unaware that these purchases are not refundable and they usually make them with their parents' credit cards. This little paragraph right here is extremely important. And the reason I say that is because it's 100% factual. Um, There's no misconstruing this statement right here. This is literally the business model of these modes right here. What you attempt to do is you push people towards spending money because they need to improve the players that they're using so they have a better chance of winning. And then when you do that, you make it seem like they're not spending money or at least as much money as they are spending. And that is 100% accurate and there's no question about it. Anyone who's played these games, unless you're a content creator or unless you're completely brainwashed or just obsessed with this game and you just don't want to see its flaws, you can see this. This is real. This is 100% accurate. Especially when it comes to children, because when you look at something like a credit or a debit card, it's already not a physical sum of money. They already can't see the money physically draining from the account. I would be willing to say if you put a little ticker on the corner of the screen here, like let's say you put the parents, you know, account, their funds up here, and then you were to give you know, a child, uh, specifically like an eight, nine year old, something of that nature, um, even somewhat older, 14, 15 year old, their credit card information. And then they were to buy things. If they could see that number physically going down, <clears throat> then they probably wouldn't buy as much, but that's the thing they can't. All they do is just press a couple buttons and all of a sudden they have the thing that they want. They can do that over and over and over again without realizing at all that they're spending real money. I know it sounds stupid, but you're thinking about it with adult brain. Of course, it sounds stupid to us. Like, we're older. We know what a bank account is. We have a bank account, and we know how the little amount of money is in that bank account, so we know. But children don't have that same understanding of currency and understanding of, like, what money means at this point. So it's very easy to trick kids into spending a bunch of money on these games especially because it's not even their money it's their parents money when you're a child you just assume especially if you're in a middle class family or even lower middle class that your parents just have unlimited money like you don't understand the concept of money we've all been there at some point unless you grow up very underprivileged like you understand a little bit that maybe there is a like a finite amount of money that your parents have but you don't understand how much that is and You don't understand that most people are like two paychecks away from homelessness, right? So you could just run up your parents' credit card and they would have no idea. They don't have to deal with it later and you don't ever hear about it. You know what I mean? And you could blame it on the parents, but that's not accurate and really in any capacity. Like the whole marketing scheme, I mean, companies like 2K make majority of their money off of people like this in this lawsuit that is their main demographic their main demographic are straight up people who are addicted to the game and they will spend whatever amount of money that they have because they don't care and they're just addicted to opening packs they're gambling addicts for more of a you know less term really or they make their money off kids who don't understand what money is that's just a fact um we've seen it with fifa ultimate team for years to the point where they've had to actually make changes in their game they're still bad do not get me wrong but they're not this bad that's just what i'm saying lawmakers and consumer advocates have equated my team and ultimate team's virtual card collection with outright gambling which it is uh though representatives for ea sports and the entertainment software association deny that this is the case which it's the audacity to deny it i understand why they're denying it because you you kind of have to if you're doing it you're just going to have to deny it until you can't do it anymore that's essentially the way they're going to have to go about this as a company which i understand uh though it is scummy and terrible it is the case It, it is the case here's my thing here's what i proposition right if these things weren't profitable and this wasn't how you were making a majority of your money why would you not change it 
why would you not change it? Why would you make it a little bit more difficult with a little bit more checks and balances in regards to spending money or make the game not as dependent on spending money if it didn't yield insane profits, right? So it's really hard to deny things, but they're going to try it anyway. Much less is it intended. That's my favorite part. It's absolutely intended. It's literally intended. That's its whole sole intent and purpose is to extract money from the player base by all means necessary. The whole purpose of it is to push you towards a pay to win model and then get you to gamble on these packs and then keep spending money until you get what you want. And the idea is to not let people get what they want quickly. The idea is to make sure that, you know, at least a certain monetary threshold has been hit before you let people, you know, off the hook, so to speak, at least at that current time. Right. Like that's the whole point. There's a reason that when you look at these games, they have weird bundles of currency. There's a reason that 2K packs don't ever come out in a even number. That's also another thing that they do. I mean, you look at 2K packs, it's not like they're 5,000 on the dot. So if you buy 450,000 VC, you're able to buy a certain amount, right? Like if they were 4,500 per pack, you could buy 100, right? For $100, you could buy 100 packs. Each pack would be a dollar, roughly, right? No, instead, they're 15,750 per pack. So it's an odd number. So it encourages you to make another microtransaction. And kids don't really understand the difference. You know, they don't understand the difference between this fake money that they're doing and the real money on their parents credit card, which is what this lawsuit is essentially doing. Right. That's real. I know there's a bunch of people are going to come in here and just talk a bunch of like cash for no reason and tell me that I'm overreacting and it's actually the kid's fault or something. And like, you know, some other like vaguely psychotic things that are going to pop up in the comments here. But like, if you are unwilling to admit that this is a problem in the video game landscape period, not just in sports gaming, then you're a lost cause. And I don't really know what to tell you at this point. Like I don't, if you're going to defend 2k for the things that they do in regards to their pro their really, really predatory monetary practices, then you're too far gone. And there's really nothing I can say that's going to change your mind on this fact. Like it's just not going to happen. Loot boxes started drawing mainstream outrage and attention in 2017 when several AAA video games, star Wars battlefront two being the biggest of that, that was a very large lawsuit. And I actually don't know how that ended. It's an interesting one. Use them in various indirect pay to win schemes. Now, here's the thing. The keyword indirect pay to win scheme is extremely misleading. OK. It's a pay to win scheme. It's not an indirect pay to win scheme. It is a pay to win scheme. The problem a lot of people have is they spend a lot of time on the game and they get really good in the game. Um, and then they come out and they're like, it's not pay to win because I'm really good at the game and I beat people who pay money. So it's not pay to win. That's not accurate at all. Uh, at all. Realistically, at all. It's not. <clears throat> Just like, you know, a lot of things in life are not technically pay to win. Like basketball, for instance, wouldn't technically be pay to win, right? But you would have a better shot if you went to AAU prep every single summer and went to basketball summer camps every single summer and spent thousands on thousands on thousands of dollars refining your game. You would if you were at the exact same physical skills, physical gifts as someone else, you would have an advantage over that person because you're more trained in that thing, right? Which I guess is a bad example to a certain extent. But what I'm mainly saying is somebody who spends money when you're at the same level is always going to have an advantage over someone who does not spend money. That's just facts. If you take LeBron James and you take two LeBron James, right? You take one, you put them in every basketball prep that they could possibly be in from the age of like six to, you know, 17. And you take one and all he's basically allowed to do is just go hoop at the local basketball court, you know, all the time. Chances are this LeBron James is at least going to be technically better than this one. Physically, they're going to be the same. This one is probably going to be better at the game of basketball as it is currently played. That's what I'm basically saying. In 2019, Senator Josh Hawley ugh, proposed a bill banning the sale of loot boxes to children. Now, I do agree with that bill. I just feel like there's no way to really implement it realistically. But the legislation attracted bipartisan sponsorship, but otherwise has gone nowhere in Congress, obviously. A state law proposed in Hawaii's legislature in 2017 likewise failed to advance. Regulators in Belgium also ruled in 2018 that loot boxes in Blizzard Entertainment's Overwatch were analog 
analogous. I don't know how to say that word, so I apologize. Uh, to gambling. Blizzard disagreed. Blizzard is not exactly the most reputable company in the world, if we're going to be honest here, but pulled the content from sale in that nation anyway, which is good. Though microtransactions still play a large role in NBA 2K22, a lot, oh my god, the series shifted its tone after 2019's 2K20, which was marketed with YouTube videos that emphasized the gambling themes of several minigames. So essentially what 2K did here, and I want to I want to specify this because people do like to point this out and be like, no, look, 2K changed. Like they, they made a mistake in 2K20, like they took all the gambling stuff out of there, but they didn't though. Like they didn't. <laughs> all they did was just changed it a little bit so it's not, it doesn't look as gambly, but it's the same. Instead of there being a slot machine, it's a vault. The odds are the same. The mechanics are the same. Everything's the same. Uh, the Plinko balls are still there. The Plinko's still there on rewards. You don't get a guaranteed reward. You have to play a Plinko game every single time, which is randomly generated for the most part. Um, also, they brought the gambling stuff back in with the clutch time wheel. Like, it's literally a wheel that spins. The daily login is a wheel that spins that you can't control. It's literally just there to make you think that you're going to be able to control it. it. It needs to be said. Like, they didn't make any marketable changes at all. They just changed the aesthetics. That's it. Like, their aesthetic cosmetic changes, but the core foundation is still the exact same as 2K20. There's no different. Yes, 2K22 has gone, has gone a little bit in a better direction with the free rewards. They're giving people more free cards and stuff like that. And I think part of that is because they knew stuff like this was coming. So Electronic Arts has gone further in self-regulating. The term self-regulating is just disgusting. You cannot trust a company this big to self-regulate. It's not going to happen. Look at British Petroleum. <laughs> How well have they self-regulated, dude? They've had oil spills every year for the last two decades. Last year, it started offering preview packs of cards, which is, it's good. It's better, I should say in which players could see their contents before buying the pack. In 2020, EA Sports launched a tool called FIFA Playtime, which allowed players or their parents to set limits on the time and money they spend in all modes of the game. Once again, it's just one of those things where they're going to try to push it on you. They're going to be like, it's actually your fault. It's not our fault. So here's this little app that can make it so your kid can't spend as much money on your credit card. Okay. But if you don't put the app on there, they can still spend as much money as they want, basically, is what they're saying. And in 2018, in response to anti-loot box outcry, the publisher started revealing the odds of drawing certain cards and items from different packs of players to buy. Now, 2K has started doing this since last year, which is a good step. It's a step in the right direction. But unfortunately, they do still do incredibly predatory things like doing instead of telling you the real odds of a 99 plus rated player we'll put sub two percent so you actually have no idea right like you have truly no idea and they'll also start watering down the player pool by putting higher tiered versions of shitty cards like they'll put the current series guys which aren't even really usable at a galaxy opal tier so they can water down the galaxy opal 97 plus player pool they do the same thing with the 95 plus and the 92 plus at the beginning of the year. And they do this and I guarantee they do it with the dark matter at some point this year as well. The 99 overall at some point they'll release like a current series batch of those cards that will water down the odds even further. Loot boxes, virtual currencies and other microtransactions have driven revenue for NBA 2K, FIFA and other full price video games sold by both Take Two and Electronic Arts, which are easily two of the worst companies in video games. No question about it. Blizzard very close i believe they're under the branch of one of those though uh take two i don't know actually that's a good question i'm actually not sure take two reported net bookings this is where it gets good total products and services sold digitally or physical products distributed to retailers this is important because majority of the time uh, these companies will lose money on the actual physical copy of the game being sold um or they just won't make that much profit so it's important to understand that before you get to the number 3.1 billion in its most recent fiscal year. So in 2021, they made 3.1 billion dollars. And I would be willing to say that at least 75% of that came from NBA 2K. I should I take that back. I would say 80% of that revenue came strictly from NBA 2K and Grand Theft Auto Online, I should say. Those are the two that I think made Take-Two about the most money. 
EA, on the other hand, just from Ultimate Team alone, like literally just from Ultimate Team alone, they accounted 1.6 billion in revenue. Insane. Absolutely insane. So the takeaways from this, look, nothing's really going to come from this lawsuit, but I do want to report on it because I feel like no one's really talking about this lawsuit. And the reason no one's talking about it is because it's probably not going to go anywhere realistically. Um, Absolute best case scenario is they're going to settle out of court for an undisclosed amount of money, uh, somewhere probably around 500,000 to a million. I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing. I don't know. Like, like I said, if you're a lawyer, jump in the uh, comments, let me know what's up. They're going to settle out of court. It's going to make this kind of disappear a little bit. And this will just be one of those stories we bring up three years from now when they get sued again. Be like, oh, yeah, back in 2022, I forgot uh, 2K or 2K. Take-Two Interactive got sold over 2K. Oh, yeah, that happened last time. What happened then? You know, exactly what I'm saying with Battlefront. Like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that lawsuit. Like, what did end up happening with that? Nothing. Nothing ended up happening with that, if I'm not mistaken. Like absolutely nothing i mean they changed the game they overhauled the progression but nothing really changed in regards to their model and that's all i can really hope for from 2k i could hope for if enough of these class action lawsuits are able to be filed against 2k period we'll take two but against and levied at 2k period that they'll have to change some of the game mechanics get rid of contracts make pack odds have preview packs or something uh make packs cheaper vc prices cheaper make it easier to end to earn mt switch to one single currency perhaps do any of these type of things right anything to improve the experience for the average player is that going to happen probably not but regardless spend your boy cheap ludes sometimes i like to do real news and i'll see you guys later peace just realized I just looked like Richard Nixon when I do that. Don't. I was watching Point Break earlier. Like, deal with it. The acting in that movie is just so bad. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs>